good morning, everybody, and I want to thank folks for coming. There's obviously a, a lot of uh, a lot of people we are grateful to see this morning uh, together, and there's a lot that I'm sure a lot of us want to talk about with each other. Um, we want to we want to make sure and honor a couple of folks today, but there are dozens and dozens of stories to be told. Uh, some of them very tragic. Some of them also just small and large acts of heroism from what occurred um, it was a week ago today which is why we're here in terms of the the shooting that we had where our officers were injured out uh, at the uh, the Dutch Brothers and we want to share I think a couple of things with you this morning um, you know first of all this is something that our community never wants to experience and I hope we never experience it again but we also know that these things sometimes can happen in the line of duty and they can happen in big cities like ours. And I just want to begin by saying that I'm so thankful for all of our officers, uh, for the work that they do each and every day, and for the fact that they go into their vehicle or their unit or their job every single morning knowing that something like this could happen. And in every situation when something like this does happen, there are so many people that come uh, to save other lives so that we don't have to tell similar stories about other folks. And I want to share with you one. You know, a good friend of mine, we, we, uh, this rippled throughout our community. And so almost all of us know people who are involved in one way or another with many of the tragedies that happened over the last two weeks. Uh, I happen to have a good friend who was in the drive through at the time. And uh, he it was actually his wife, who's a medical doctor. And she was in, in the Dutch Brothers drive through and all of this happened, you know, doing what most people, she's calling her husband and she's, you know, terrified of gunshots. He's hearing the gunshots on the phone. And I share that with you because she got to go home to her family that night because of the acts of our officers. And because of uh, some of the folks that we're going to tell you the stories about what they did today, so a civilian, a neighbor, and also one of our police service aides. And so as tragic as the, 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 what happened to our officers was, they prevented dozens of lives from being lost that day. When you look at the number of shells, casings, the intent of the suspect, and what was happening in terms of what they were trying to do throughout, looks like you know coming from California and in New Mexico, uh, they would have continued firing at anything and anyone had our officers not acted. And so for that, we are so grateful, our entire community is. So we want to highlight a couple of individuals who are involved with that today. And our chief is going to share uh, more on this, but I want to tell their story. But I think we also have um, Officer Kinney here, right? So, uh, you know, he... Um, we, we don't want to put you on the spot if you're not ready, but you're here today. So I haven't been able to see you personally, but I just want to say he was one of the responding officers, of course, uh, whose life was saved by uh, that vest. But he also, of course, uh, saved dozens of lives that day. Thank you on behalf of the city uh, and our state and all of those families. Um, we, we owe you something that we can never, never talk about or appreciate enough, which is uh, folks like uh, I ex shared going home to their family not hurt because of your actions. Uh, so we'll be, I'm sure, telling your story much more uh, down the road as well as the other folks recover uh, when we can talk about uh, what they did that day as well. So first I want to talk about uh, Jacqueline. Jacqueline is one of our PSAs and she incredibly uh, came and provided immediate life-saving efforts uh, to James Eichel. She's only 19. As you know, our, our police service aides are hopefully a pipeline to, uh, f to full officer status, and they're also available to folks at a younger age and at different stages in their life. And our PSAs, you know, it's, it's something that they go into these situations with our officers, just like them. And her actions that day, she she remained calm during these chaotic moments, which I can't even imagine how she could do that, let alone. And she did what she needed to do to save the life of a sworn officer. Uh, she had had you know, some training, of course, absolutely, but she applied a tourniquet to Officer Eichel. And uh, I'm scared to think of what might have happened if she didn't do that. And so I absolutely believe you saved his life. 
and thank you so much for that. And we're, he's going to get out of the hospital later today. And so also good timing to share uh, your story. Now, I also want to mention uh, Johnny Garcia. And I saw, I know he's a Cowboys fan. Where's the jersey? There he is. <laughs> Johnny was actually at his home when he heard gunfire. And this is something that, you know, all of us hope we do the right thing in the situation. And uh, to see someone and meet someone like Johnny, who actually is just sitting at home, hears gunfire, and decides to run into that situation, put his own life at risk. And he saw officers in need of help, and he got uh, Officer Mario Verbeck out of the way of the second shooting as it was taking place. And he, which is, uh, it's unbelievable, he also got on the radio and let us know, uh, us is a, you know, APD through dispatch, what was happening, which was critical at the time. And so uh, he called for help, and in many ways, uh, you know, if you had not been there, you know, Mario probably would have died. Um, so we're so grateful for you. And what an awesome example of who we all want to be as civilians and what we all hope that we would do. But I know, you know, a lot of us don't, and you did. Uh, you rose to the occasion when our community needed you and when one of our officers needed you. And so uh, thank you so much for that. And I would also just share that, you know, I, we heard his voice. We were listening to the police radios up here as soon as we found out what happened. And I remember hearing his voice. I remember it because it was so unofficial. There weren't all these 10 codes and everything, you know. <laughs> and I didn't, at the time, I didn't say anything because I had no idea. But I absolutely remember that. It just stuck out in me in that morning. It was like, oh, it was interesting. I heard this voice on the radio. So uh, your actions that you both took were incredible. And uh, I don't say that lightly. They literally were. And they saved lives. So on behalf of the city, I just want to say thank you so much. And uh, I know, let me hand it over to the chief uh, to share a few additional words. Chief. Thank you, Mayor. And I think this goes to show that uh, heroes come in every uh, form, whether they're civilians, they're law enforcement officers, they're public service aides, or they're fire personnel. And over the course of the next few weeks, we're going to recognize a lot of heroes. Uh, APD is going to do this swiftly because it's important that we recognize how the community was there for us during this time of need. And I think it's now more than ever that we need leadership uh, to guide us through this difficult time. When I was speaking with James at the hospital, he made me promise him that we would not lose this momentum of ensuring that we make Albuquerque safe. Every single one of us has a job to do. Every single one of us has to push us to greatness. In terms of foot, football analogies, you know, great teams have great leaders that push them to do miraculous things and they win Super Bowl titles. And we must push the entire system and leadership to advance their areas to ensure that we do everything we can to make Albuquerque safe. These heroes today put their lives on the line to help two people in a time of need. And it just can't be during these critical incidents when there's this horrible incidents helping, happening in the community when we unite. We have to unite as a community. There has been too much division over the past, you know, 2011, 2010. I started to see the division as a young lieutenant in this department and it's continued. The Albuquerque Police Department has taken great strides in community building, working with the community, working as hard as we can to meet the requirements of our settlement agreement. We have to need, we need to stay united from this point forward and not let us only unite after tragedy. This has been a difficult two weeks for the Albuquerque Police Department. Not only did we have two officers shot and, and two others injured during the course of a shooting, but we also had a young man lose his life at a school. That shouldn't have happened. The violence has to stop and we need leadership across the state to step up and assist us in making the changes needed to keep Albuquerque safe. I want to thank you, Johnny, personally, for helping our officers that day, for putting your life on the line. And you had a family back home that I'm sure were terrified, and afterwards they're probably even more terrified, like, Why, what did you do that for, Johnny? Well, you know what? You did it because it's the humane right thing to do. And we have an award for you 
uh, here that we're going to be presenting you a plaque, and it's a community service award for the service that you did in assisting us. So I want to say thank you. Jackie, I want to thank you also for that day stepping up and helping James. Uh, he was in need. You were the best 82 there is uh, out there. And uh, for the rest of your career, you should be proud of the fact that when the time came, you stepped up to the challenge and you did what you needed to do. There's one last person in here that needs some recognition. Jackie provided the use of a tourniquet that day in saving uh, this officer's life. And our doc, Doc Hazen is somewhere here in the back. Uh, he's been instrumental in ensuring that everybody is trained up on their tourniquets. Uh, this tourniquet is just an example of when the state legislature and everybody works together for the greater good we benefit as a community and as a profession. That tourniquet was made a reality years ago through a lot of work by everybody working together and hopefully we could get back to the basics and ensure that we continue to work together for the better good of not just the community but the professions that are protecting the community each and every day. So I want to thank you both Johnny and Jackie and if you guys come up here we're going to give you guys a couple of plaques. Maybe? Sure. <clears throat> I just want to say thank you. Um, I learned how to apply tourniquet because I asked Officer Brian Johnson. Bri sorry, not Brian Johnson. Brian Shannon. Brian Shannon is who taught me initially how to apply a tourniquet. After that, I wanted to do more medical training, and Lieutenant Jim Edison and Dr. Hazen made sure that I got the the training that I wanted, and I can't be more appreciative for that. So. Thank you, Jackie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you, guys. Yeah, let's give them a round of applause.